Okay, y'all, welcome to a video with me, the Stonk Dad. I am the Stonk Dad, and I'm super excited to start this new week up with you guys. I have not done a video in a couple weeks, and I kind of feel bad. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting on here. I'm going to do a quick video about the Market NetFlow convergence tool that I use every single week, every single day, pretty much. Um, but, yeah, I kind of feel bad that I haven't got on here in a little while. So, um, I miss y'all. Thank you for uh, sticking with me. I did have good news come in, and that's kind of why I have been absent for the last week or two. Um, my wife is actually pregnant. She uh, went through a ton of IVF rounds, and I've just been with her every step of the way. It's been going on for about a year, and I haven't been very vocal about it. Um, but yeah, we have gone through three rounds of IVF, which is really, really hard to see her go through that. Um, but she's a strong, strong woman, and we're happy that... Um, we're finally going to be having a new baby come into our lives in the next um, few months in April. She's doing April. Um, so yeah, that's just a little news, personal life and me. I don't share very much about that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of why I've been kind of absent. Um, so I hope you guys understand. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be having a little boy and uh, my daughter is super excited. She's uh, turning five in January, so she gets to be a big sister. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video guys. I don't want to make it too long. Um, but I have a little bit of time and I thought that I'd get on here and do a little bit of a back testing video like I do. Um, you, you'll see a ton of my videos of back testing the convergence tool. Um, but I can't explain it once we hop into the charts here. I always go briefly over it every single week. Okay. Okay. So here is the market net flow tool. Now this was from Friday, so I'll just explain it. It just really quickly and then what I do during these back test videos. Now we had a very, very good week um, last week in the market. We pretty much bottomed around 409 on SPY and then went all the way up to about 436, as you can see here um, in the chart and went up to 436. Um, you can't really see the price, but it went um, slightly there above 436 level. Um, but on the market net flow chart, it basically explains the entire um, all of the call and put options, all of the flow of that in the entire day, it plots it on this chart for us. Um, and it shows us exactly where all the money is going in, um, whether it be calls or puts, but it factors in the buys and sells of those because you know that there's um, gonna be buys and sells of calls every single second pretty much. There, there's just hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars that go into these option contracts. And it puts it pretty simply on this chart for you. And that's why I like about it. It's very simple um, over uh, amidst the, the uh, complexity of the market data that comes in. It puts it very simply for all of us. Okay. So this green line is the call um, option flow. And then the put is, or sorry, the red line is the put option flow. And you can see on Friday, we had a pretty wide divergence between those. You could see that the calls were definitely in the lead and you could see that price pretty much followed it to the T. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through each day of last week and see how well these bars did down below. Now, these are the convergence bars. And what they show you is it shows you the um, the strength of the price action relative to the flow data. So you can see that if calls were way above and we got a green flip, you could see that the momentum of um, the price of SPY, that's what this white line is, is the price of SPY. Um, you can see that the momentum of the market was heading up. Um, so it was going in favor of what um, the flow um, traders were doing, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, it, if it doesn't, you can kind of get it once I, I go through all these, um, the back testing, you'll kind of understand a little bit better. And uh, if you want more videos like this, I do, um, I've done these a lot over the past um, several months, so you can always go back and look at them too. I also have some um, detailed explanation videos about this tool that I use too on my channel. Um, but enough about that. Let's go back to Monday, Monday's flow, the 30th. And then um, I'm going to take a screenshot here. Boom. And drag it over here. Boom. So we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to drag it out so we can see it a little bit better there. Okay. So um, I never count the first 15 minutes of the market open. Um, this is the full day. Um, so... I always cancel out the first 15 minutes of the market, even sometimes the first 30 minutes because the flow is kind of working itself out. There's not a lot of data to kind of predict where the market's going to be going. So I always, um, when I do my backtest videos, I don't count the first 15 to 30 minutes. Um, so we'll just make it so like that. Um, but 
puts, you can see that they were slightly in the lead. Um, not very much. Now, when it's this choppy and there's not a wide divergence, I tend to just stay away completely in the market. Um, you can see how close they were here. So um, these convergences aren't going to be the best, um, but we're still going to back test them because they flipped. So right here, you could see it flipped from about 413.25 is where it triggered the alert. And then um, it head down to about 412.50. So that was about a 75 cent move to the downside, which would be a clear winner there. But then it flipped slightly here and then it head up and turned gray. So we're gonna count that one as a loser because it did flip. Um, now remember the wider the divergence between calls and puts, whether it be puts above or calls above, um, you always look for that to get um, more confident moves. Um, so you can see how messy it got um, around here when puts cross and then they're just like literally neck and neck. You can see that convergence had a hard time picking up where the the price relative to flow was going because it flipped red and then green. Um, so right there, you could see that it was a loser on this red one, but then it flipped green and it was a winner there. So we'll just cancel that one out and not count that as anything. Uh, I wouldn't play anything regardless. <laughs> uh, this one looks like it triggered and it only moved down slightly. Um, so if it's not more than 50 cent move or, or more to the downside, I tend to just count it as a wash trade, uh, not a win or a loss. Um, but this one here looks like it did flip red slightly and the divergence was okay here. So we're gonna have to count that one as a loss even though it was like only one or two minutes when it flipped. Um, and then another one here. Now we're not starting off hot, <laughs> not gonna lie, but it looks like we did have a nice winner at the very end of the day um, within the last 15 to 20 minutes or so. Um, that one went down about a dollar. So we'll count that one as a win. So we'll tally it up here. Looks like three losses and only two winners. Now it happens, ooh, that is a terrible two. A little bit better. Now some days we'll get pretty rough convergences. I know for me over the past like two weeks, it's been extremely rough um, for the data. Now the win rate of this tool is around 80% on average, um, but I've seen it as low as 50%. Um, that's like the lowest I've ever seen it is around 50%. Um, so we're definitely going to have some rough weeks. So this day was kind of rough, but let me tally it here. Just document it so we move on. So that was Monday. Let's look at Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it progressed pretty well throughout the week, and it got a little bit better. Now, Tuesday was a little bit rough as well because we got flow pretty much below zero or at zero. Um, for most of the day, <laughs> um, even though it looks like it worked out a couple times. So it looks like here we had um, red convergence. It looks like it flipped right at the beginning of the morning, um, but we're not gonna count that. Oops, I gotta screenshot it so I can draw. Hold on. I was like trying to draw on it. So um, even though this flipped before um, my 15 minute increment, I um, mean, it did head down slightly, but then it rallied back up. We won't count that one at all. Uh, okay, then looks like we had a green flip here, which was a pretty good one. We did slightly come down, but it eventually rallied back up. And you can see that this green convergence was green the entire time on this move up. This was an ex excellent move. Holy cow. So this one went from like one, or sorry, not one, 415.75 and went all the way up to 417.5, it looks like, around there. So that was about a $2 move. That one was a clear winner. Now it looks like it got a little messy here when puts spiked above and then um, right here. Um, but it, it was gray. It was too small for you to do anything. So we'll wash that one. It looks like it flipped green again up here. It looks like you got a small move, maybe about 50 cents or so, maybe 75 cents. So we'll count that one and then it flipped gray. And then it flipped green again at the end of the day, and that one was a nice win too. It caught close to the bottom there. So that was about a dollar move at the end of the day. We'll count that one. So it looks like three wins and zero losses. We will take that any day. That bumps up the win rate a little bit. Um, so let's see, let's go to the first Wednesday. Now this was the crazy day. I, I believe this was, oops. I believe this was FOMC day. Um, you could see that bulls were clearly in the lead here and it kind of predicted the entire move. You could see that um, 30 minutes after the hour, it was, oh man, I keep forgetting to take a screenshot here. 
this was a really good day for flow this pretty much boosted the market all the way up after um fomc so it flipped around there and then we had a nice move up that was about a two dollar move three dollar move maybe so that was a win and then we had gray convergence that trended down a little bit then it flipped green here that one probably would have been a loss because it flipped gray and it went down so we'll count that one as a loss um, but right here we'll count that one as a one it got a nice move up there about a dollar and then another one here is where it triggered another win and then another one here see how that works guys when the divergence is huge like that you can get some really really nice moves up so um, that one went from about 420 all the way up to 423 <laughs> that was a good move four wins and one loss four for five Okay, now let's move on to Thursday. I believe the last part of... Oh, see, this one was a little bit weird. Because we had bearish flow on Thursday, but we trended up. Okay, so here, we're going to have to count this one as a loss because it trended down slightly, but then it went straight up. So we're going to count that one as a loss. Looks like this one did okay. That one was about a 50 cent or so move, so we'll count that one as a win. But this one here was a loss. This was a rough day for flow, but you can see that Great Convergence um, did a very, very good job catching uh, the price action, not lining up with the flow. So you can see we had a nice trend up day, but flow was bearish. Um, there, it was pretty much a Great Convergence the entire day. So you can see it made that huge move up. Oh, it looks like it flipped. It did flip red right here slightly, but not for very long. So we're going to have to count that one as a loss too. So three losses and one win. One for four. That drags the win right down slightly. But I think Friday was a really good day. Let's go to Friday. Okay, Friday is the last day. This was a good one. Okay. So um, there's the first 15 minutes of the market right there. Um, it looks like it caught, it caught a slight move. Ooh. My air is a little bit rough there, but that was about a 50 cent move, slight green there. And then it caught another one here. Now it did head down a little bit. I don't think that would have hit your um, stop loss. It moved 50 cents down, but then it rallied right back up. And you can see that it caught the entire move back up there. So that one was like a, it went from 434 all the way up to 436. So a $2 move up. And then same thing with this one here. It did go down right after it triggered, but it just rallied right back up after that. And that one was a nice win as well. So it looks like three wins and zero losses. So let me tally all these up and then we can get our final, um, our final percent win rate here. Okay. So we got how many trades? Three, seven, 12, 15, 20 trades. So 20 convergence flips out of how many wins? 5, 9, 10, 13. So it went 13 for 20, which isn't the best, but still a 65% win rate um, in this tool this week. Not bad. I've seen better. Um, there's some um, things that you can increase that win rate if you um, use other tools and um, my strategy. I have that strategy on, on Twitter. Now, on some of the losses, like if you go back and look at um, let's say like, uh, Thursdays. So if we go back and look at Thursdays, you can kind of see, um, why we wouldn't have done that. Um, because clearly the market was up, even though we had bearish flow, um, we could have stepped out of these now midday trades. That's pretty much where all the losses are going to be coming from. Um, so this was during midday and pretty much a lot of the losses that I see, are just in the middle of the day pretty much all of them are <laughs> so convergence the win rate goes up if you trade in the morning before lunch and then after lunch um like about two hours before the market closes the win rate drastically goes up so if you j just eliminate like the midday trades the convergence flips um i'm, I'm sure it would be closer to 80 percent win rate on those okay just a little side note to add um but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm gonna go hang out with the family watch some hockey and football Hope you guys have an awesome Sunday. I will see y'all in the next one.